So my talk will be about development of sustainable revitalization model of natural and cultural heritage sites on the southern edge of the Gulf of Finland. First thing I want to say is that the southern coast of the Gulf of Finland is organized spatially by a dominant Peter, Peterhof road. It's like an axis, a unique one-of-a-kind road created by the will of Peter the Great. And now as we mark the 350th anniversary of Peter the Great, it is great that uh, I can start my presentation with it. It all began in 1710 and Peter the Great intended to eclipse with it the road from Paris to Versailles. But initially, the idea was to create a land road to Kronstadt, because navigating th uh, through the bay uh, was precarious. And uh, over 300 years, the Peterhof road line hasn't changed. And it uh, follows a number of uh, modern stretches of the road. I tried to show it on the map with the red line. The blue circles are the heritage, cultural heritage sites which abound in our city. This is an interactive map. It's exciting to check it out. But the density of uh, heritage sites on the Peterhof Road is something to be overawed with. There are over 500 sites. This book by Mr. Gorbatenko contains uh, the most detailed description and profiling of all the landscape uh, system features consisting of the emperor's uh, residences and private uh, villas, gardens and orchards. Nowadays, there are different structures in place, stylistically, because these um, palaces were rebuilt with time, territory was fragmented and then put back together. So in general, landscape is very much different from what it was 300 years ago. Gradually, the road started to take features of an industrial road uh, with uh, factories, plants and barracks straddling it. Since 1915, a railroad line was started going to this place. Following active urbanization, the landscape has gone undergone major changes. But if you know the history of this place, if you're aware about the stages of developing it, uh, you can imagine its historical landscape. Apart from world cultural heritage sites on the southern shore of the Gulf of Finland, uh, there are specially protected areas. Uh, one of them is the southern uh, coast of the Niva Bay. And uh, you can see three sections of that SPA on the map. It was established in 2013 with an idea to preserve 
natural complexes there and uh, maintaining ecological balance. The nearest section nearest mm, to the city is a Znaminka cluster area with the cottage in the middle. And there is uh, also a monument to nature, Sergeyevka Park, and in the west, uh, Kronstadt uh, colony. This schematic here denotes main green areas. These are green plantations, not only specially protected ones. Also, uh, Peterhof, Oranienbaum. These are expansive green areas. And the red shows the smallest site. Smallest, but very valuable. And this will be the centerpiece of the presentation of my model. Unfortunately, many sites declined, even though they survived the war, uh, they were, they became desolate after perestroika. So the site users faced a situation where they were unable to maintain these uh, pretty large architectural sites. All of that resulted in the decline and downfall in the post perestroika era. So before moving on to my prime example, I wanted to give you some overview about the most significant uh, cultural heritage sites. First one is the lucky one. Uh, it was in ruins, had been in ruins for a long time, but then it was rebuilt into the presidential residence in uh, a pace uh, which is breathtaking. So we didn't lose it, even though this uh, expeditious renovation resulted in a number of flaws, which a trained eye will spot immediately. The next one, which wasn't that lucky, is uh, Mikhailovsk Dacha. It was transferred under the university to set up uh, the high management, management university. But only half of this facility was uh, reconstructed or renovated because of soaring prices and the palace itself the palace itself was transferred back to the government in this uh, very sad condition uh, znaminka mansion just like uh, mikhailovska dacha following the revolution and the war they were used as uh, health improvement centers. It used to house a collective farm or a colony. But after the perestroika, it started to show signs of wear and tear, and now it's in a bad, bad shape. Uh, next. We have uh, uh, Peter Hoff uh, Museum, which needs no introduction, unlike uh, Lugovoy Park. This is a hydrological system that feeds famous fountains with water. So the Lugovoy Park is constantly under threat of being turned into a landfill or something else 
There is always something going on on the border of it, and locals try to fend off any threats. This is uh, very difficult and effort taking process. Uh, next, we have the Dacha itself. It used to be considered a facility of the local engineering university. Then they wanted to open a uh, an office uh, for registration of uh, public acts, civil acts, but nothing like that is happening at the moment. The next item is uh, Sergevka mention there are horrible stories surfacing up on the internet about the condition as it is in but it's not that bad actually of course it could benefit from some uh, renovation it uh, falls under st petersburg state university and it is maintained in a fairly a good state, except for facade, uh, which is a cause for anxiety amongst uh, lovers of this palace. The park itself is a monument of nature, especially a protected one. And some other monuments are not being used and they are in a critical condition. This is an English house, a building, and the water pump station, and Oranian Baum Reserve Museum. Ever since it was annexed to the Peterhof, it's condition has improved dramatically with a lot of uh, renovative effort invested so it's no cause for concern anymore so now we've reached the benoit dacha which will be the focus of my talk further on so this is the only monument that is not the emperor's residence. This is a summer residence of the of uh, Benoit. Uh, this is a famous uh, dynasty of uh, artists of French and British origin, which gave Russia and the whole world a plethora of composers. artists and uh, other art activists. It is uh, associated with uh, Mr. Benoit, Louis Benoit, and his, his sons used to live in Peterhof where their father resided because of work. And as they grew up, they purchased plots of land by Peterhof to build a family dacha. So the elder son, Leonti, became the architect of dacha. There were three dachas, all in all, but only one remained. And it is the one which you can see on this picture. Uh, below is the sketch of Mr. Leontiev Dacha, which we'll cover later. Dacha Benoit is a unique historical Dacha, which survived until our times. We still have this uh, architectural building, which is uh, very valuable, as well as the blueprints, along with the signature of Leontiev 
Finland and uh, the history of the family, both the family living there and the architect as well, because we have a huge archive in the family. Importantly enough, the territory of this monument never really suffered. It has never been built over, which allows us to take this architectural monument without any significant obstructions. A significant change still was that two neighboring villas of Leon Benoit and Alexander Meissner burnt down in the early 20th century. And as a result, we can appreciate only one villa out of three and not the whole beautiful architectural ensemble. The family picture shows the family of Leon Benoit in the very center under the window. Such windows were in all three duchas. Indeed, they were beautiful, magnificent, magnificent for their times. A single pane which caused amazement among the contemporary people because they never saw such huge windows uh, with such huge window panes. There was one single window pane. In the beginning of the 20th century, after the Russian Revolution, Sergeyevka became the biological institute. You can see the picture of men of science with the palace in the background and Babulska village with all the duchess that were nationalized at the time turned into the resort area for the educationalists of Soviet times and then into the uh, rest home for teachers. Now the modern area looks like this here on the map, different colors denote different protection areas. Here we see overlapping of different monument areas. The blue color shows the three surviving duchess of the whose historical outlook still survived along with the areas. And also we have water protected areas, special protected natural area and this way. Ah, yes, and also just a protection area for monuments. These are newly unearthed areas. We have a total of four different protection areas here, which makes this region quite challenging for the use by any means. Now, this object was damaged by the restructuring. A restoration was planned, restoration effort was planned, but it was scrapped because the funding was canceled. And you can see what happened after that on this pictures. Still quite decent looking building in 1990s, now looks quite deplorable. Ever since 2010, we started to started an exercise on the initiative project on the development of the concept of restoration of the whole complex of old Babuiska village, not only the Benoir dacha, but also the two neighboring historical dachas, Gruba and Kron dacha. But at the initial stage, we try to maximize our knowledge first about the potential of this site, secondly about the capacities, in, in, increase its capacities to be used in the interest of the university. And among different works we did, we did only the archive study, as a result of which we have developed this virtual reconstruction in 3D of the missing ensemble com components that you can see on this slide. Our next phase was the search for the concept of the revival of the former village of Bobulske by studying the marketing and economic potential of this site. And we studied the potential stakeholder groups for this project aside from the university people 
This is a fragment from the presentation of one of the student groups who worked under the leadership of Dennis Rich from Columbia College from United States, who taught us how to raise funds, how to do marketing and manage cultural projects. For us, it was an eye-opening experience indeed that we knew about only based on the example of very good Kaliningrad project. It was uh, Easterbrook Castle there. For the first time, we learned about this as early as in 2010, about how social project projects are organized. And owing to that example, we decided to move along this path. Here you can see one of the preliminary concepts of for the revival of Benoit Dacha, based on the example of this small picture that Leonti Benoit drew by depicting not only the actual dacha who he wanted which he wanted to build but also how the family will live there and students suggested that the reconstruction of this lifestyle of the late 19th century as a uh, Sunday day or pastime can turn into one of the forms of revitalization of the complex of dachas and their subsequent use. As a result of a series of experimental projects in 2019, a new work by Marina Svetlova was published. It was a, a student's thesis published where the sustainable model of revitalization was mentioned and proposed for the first time. And this model was applied for Benoit Dacha and for the whole complex of Dachas and the park surrounding them. Here you can see the comparisons of uh, project goals with the sustainable development goals. And we came to a conclusion that 11th, 4th, 12th, and 9th SDGs fully comply with the revitalization goals of our project. Also, we have developed a system. We have modeled processes of revitalization from the investigations and studies, from design work, cultural projects, the actual work, and their subsequent uh, putting into operation and the development of the art residence. We have also developed reconstructions of all dachas based on the design of the 1990s and the subsequent plan areas that we organized. We have studied the typology of space of the developed design project on how they can be used as uh, part of art residence project. And we have analyzed the infrastructure of the St. Petersburg University and the potential cultural cluster, which pops up with this spatial analysis of Sergeyevka uh, village and Benoit Dacha. You can see that it forms a real cluster. And next to it, we have Petrov scientific complex. And all together, it allowed us to launch a project without starting the restriction activities, actually. But one of the success formulas now to achieve a goal, act as if you have already achieved it. That's why there is no restriction yet, but our residence is already there. We have also done calculations and feasibility study that has demonstrated that in future, the project might be quite commercially viable, being on the books of the St. Petersburg University, who are paying and funding this project at the moment. If we add additional um, funds from donors, we can do the full restoration work and put it 
on a most commercially viable basis. This way, briefly, the function of this all is to make sure that this space eventually becomes a creative space of art residence with the uh, training museum, a sort of creative uh, local lore and artistic museum, and with an immersive experience for the residents and recreation. Cafe, restaurant, of course, will be attached to it and a natural park. Unique opportunities for creativity of artists of different schools, plein airs, and a possibility to visit the neighboring monuments, which I showed in the very beginning. During the defense, it received the highest marks from the State Commission and their approval, the recommendation for implementation, and they submitted to the Inspectorate on Protection of State Monuments of St. Petersburg. After the showcasing it in front of the rector's uh, board, we received personal words of thanks from the rector himself. Speaking about this project as an integrated process, I can say you can see here on the diagram four principal forms of activities include educational block, scientific block, project and practical block, and the educational block for different types of work. The scientific research should also include the soci sociological studies. We have done surveys for the verification of our concept as early as in 2019, in 2021, we have done a more general survey under the auspices of the Landscape Architect Architecture Council on the popularity of history in public spaces without even attaching it to the Benoit Dacha, but generally speaking, is there a demand for this? Also, just like the previous survey has reconfirmed that such demand does exist, it's quite active, and the memory of place is important for our citizens. And as a result, such projects as ours has huge potential for further development. Here you can find the list of cultural activities which we undertake or plan to implement. Also, we are actively publishing the results of our work here in the Zochi 21st Century magazine. We have published three articles already. The exhibition, exhibitions of our uh, project were exhibited in the famous libraries. And uh, also, we have uh, celebrated 225th anniversary of the Benoit family in Russia, which was part of the cultural forum. It was a three-day event. a huge bus ride around uh, the architectural heritage monuments in St. Petersburg and Petergof, the presentation in the Union of Architects and the round table in Benoit family apartment. Also, our information partner, the magazine Baltia, the organized an educational project, they published uh, some notes of Benoit also, we organize volunteer free Labor Day. We call them art uh, deployments because everything starts with art in art residence. They are quite creative and interesting. In particular, on the group by Dacia, where the conservation was done with the use of banners with the pages of Benoit ABC. And this way, we celebrated that anniversary. Besides, that's how we started our fights against the overgrowth and vegetation, which can uh, contaminate 
the landscape balance and uh, it is even mentioned in the special protected area management the exchange practices for restoration are done to uh, record the deformation of buildings it is of course not by far sufficient for the development of the project or uh, design of restoration we need more precise measurements but for preliminary assessment these materials are quite valuable like for instance the blueprints you can see here have been done by students of St. Petersburg University and by the Architectural Construction University. The most recent group was the group for St. Petersburg University students. Aside from St. Petersburg workshops, we have developed a concept for the use of the landscape and landscape zoning within Benoit Dacha, we are exhibiting uh, tablets with the revitalization plans. Also, we do plan airs. In 2021, there were three such significant plan airs organized. The most important one of them was five-day uh, summer plan air. And in February, we plan to set up an exhibition showing the results of that plan air. Also, we shoot uh, feature films there and uh, state uh, St. Petersburg University is planning to establish a center for cultural heritage there. It's not a done and over with, but we surely hope that such a center will appear there through which uh, the assistance to all project among other things will be enforced and uh, we are putting together a team now so far we don't have strong enough team yet not big enough team yet and we organize webinars and lectures we're planning to organize webinars and lectures on cultural heritage and uh, emergency work will be done on the dutch uh, premises within the framework of the grant uh, assistance we are planning to receive funding for the restoration project and later on we'll be developing the art residence and uh, local lower park we're planning to write a book and shoot a video what we're missing here we're missing partners restorations professionals hopefully this problem will be solved soon i would like to get not only grants but also donor funds we do have some donors but not enough for the scale of this project and the support through social networks is also always welcome support of uh, experts through educational programs and so on we from our side are engaging more and more students and local residents and tourists into uh, the uh, target group of this project. Very interesting practices are organized with our students. Also, all our students, the first thing they do is they uh, design the entrance gates. I'm sorry, Evgeny, but we are running out of time here. Yes, I'm coming to an end. These are some of the conceptual drawings, as you can see here. Here you can see the schematic of the of this whole thing for the faculty people, rector's office, the uh, revitalization of Benoit Dacia. Here we have our residence, and uh, it can deliver the maximum effect for the usefulness of the educational process and memorial restoration. What are the conclusions and key takeaways? Revitalization of sites through social projects requires building of a team, which is a challenging task. Involvement of a large audience, which takes an unpredictable amount of time, but ensures sustainability in the long run. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your attention.